Good morning. I'm Heather Flanagan. The Congregation of Zion Lutheran Church in downtown Hamilton, Ohio, welcomes our Facebook and radio audience to our 10 o'clock worship service. Our services are also on the zionhamilton.org website. If you are in need of prayer or want to have our weekly service bulletin emailed to you, please contact our church office at 513-863-5774 or email us at zionlutheranoffice at gmail.com. Our service today is led by Pastor John Minnemeyer. Our music director is Bill Seal, and the lector today is Gail Ford. Our prelude is How Great Thou Art, and today we will also have special music while the offering is collected. We will have a choral voluntary called Come to the Water, And our postlude is March by Henry Purcell. We now begin with our prelude. Hear me now. <laughs> well, let's see how many remember what the bishop taught us. Jesus loves you. We care about. Care about. We care about you. Jesus loves you. Okay. Has anybody said that to anybody else in the last week or so? Because that's our assignment. We're supposed to share that with people. So try to remember to do that this week. Our heartfelt felt prayers are with the Beers family. Their papa, Bob, entered his heavenly rest on Friday. And um, our sympathies go out to the family of Dave Shule, who passed away on Thursday. There are no services for the public for Dave Shule. It's family only. And um, the services for the Beers family is on Wednesday. You can call the office for the information. A couple of happy thank yous. Robin Kalin did a Thrive Into Action project, and she made boxes with all kinds of school supplies, and we gave out to the teachers in our congregation and some of our families. And we got a lovely thank you note from uh, Sonia Smith's class. So it's Mrs. Sonia Smith, Mrs. Davis, and also Mrs. Taylor. And they thanked us, and so did Jose, Tony, Austin, Jerome, Steve, Blair, Dustin, And I can't read the last name, is that William? And then it looks like Canada. At any rate, they're very happy for those school supplies. So we are reaching out with God's love into the school system. And we had a representative from Wernley. Were you here in church that Sunday? It was an exciting Sunday. And um, we have a thank you card here from, what's his first name, Pastor? I'm blanking on it. And I can't read his handwriting. Oh, my. (laughs) Christopher. No. Was it Christopher? It is Chris. Chris. Okay. All right. That's Chris. At any rate, um, he was absolutely blown away by our service. He thinks our church is absolutely lovely. And he could not stay and do anything with us for too long afterwards because it was his 35th wedding anniversary when he left that day. So... um, they, we raised, remember how Pastor had those two tin cans and we made a, what did you call Noise, that, Pastor? Noisy offering. A noisy offering. That noisy offering raised $256 for Wernley. So that was, that's wonderful, good news. Now, um, I also had a Thrivent Action Team. And what that is, is Thrivent, if you are a member, you get a $250 card and you have to have an action team do something as a community project. And our project was to take breakfast over to the post office. And I thank everybody that helped us with that. They got breakfast this Friday morning. So that was quite nice. Look at the calendar in October. October 15th is our fall fellowship dinner and craft sale. And October 21st is Oktoberfest. So please keep looking at those announcements. 
Okay, October 15th is our fall fellowship dinner. And then October 21st is Oktoberfest. You're welcome. Yes, bud. The 14th? 14th of um, October. Okay. United Methodist Church, we have our lunch. Anything else? Oh, yes. I didn't put on my robe yet because I wanted you to see my shirt that I can't wear next to my face because I look terrible in yellow. And Robin Kalen, oh, you, I saw her come in. See, she's got one too. <laughs> And the shirts that are in the sanctuary, these are the last ones we have. If you need one, please take one. You are welcome to have them. There's a couple of uh, children's larges and then a medium and a couple of adult larges. Any other announcements? If not, let's listen to our prelude. Oh, yes. Ah, 6 p.m. Catechism tonight. Downstairs in the rec room. Excellent. I'll try to join you. Yeah. Uh, Excuse me? I'll try to join you, yes. You know, I never took catechism in the Lutheran church, so I can probably learn something too. All righty, let's listen to our prelude and prepare for worship. I don't think, is my headset working because I'm getting a red, yes, okay, I don't know why I'm getting a red um, signal. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Please kneel if you are able. Let us bow before you, God, in humility, confessing our sin, steadfast and faithful God. You have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. 
for the harm we have caused, known and unknown. Forgive us for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation. Forgive us for the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor. Forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we sing hymn number 522 as we gather at your table. the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. O Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. The first lesson is from the 33rd chapter of Ezekiel. God appointed Ezekiel as a sentinel for the house of Israel. Ezekiel must faithfully convey God's warnings to the people. Remarkably, God, who is about to attack Jerusalem, gives a warning with the hope that repentance will make the attack unnecessary. And now the first lesson. So, you mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now, you mortal... Say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, O our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We would now read responsibly Psalm 119, verses 33 through 40, which is found in your bulletin. Teach me, O Lord, the ways of your statutes. And I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your teaching. I shall keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments. For that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees. And And not not to unjust unjust gain. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood. Give Give me life in your your own way. Fulfill your promise to your servant. Which which is for those who fear you. you. Turn away the reproach that I dread. Because because your your judgments are are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. By your righteousness enliven me. The second lesson is from the 13th chapter of Romans. The obligation of Christians is to love one another and so fulfill the heart and goal of the law. Clothes make the person as we put on the Lord Jesus Christ and live today in light of the future God has in store for us. And now the second lesson. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandments are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a, to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put us on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and malicious, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Oh, 
news today, according to St. Matthew in the 18th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out that fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. day in the church year tends to be a special day. It's uh, it, after Labor Day. The choirs are back, so our musicians are with us, and we're grateful for that. Uh, it's the resumption of the Sunday school and Christian formation, and uh, we're, we're obviously excited and, uh, and uh, pleased about that. You heard about confirmation starting tonight. Uh, and then God's work, our hands, has been the ELCA's response uh, to September 11th. So the date has always been the Sunday closest to September 11th and that tragedy, but as a positive response and a day of service to our community and to others. And so Patty told you about breakfast at the post office on uh, Friday as uh, a gift from this congregation to the community. At this time, I want to install the teaching staff, so uh, those of you who uh, have agreed to serve again and uh, share your gifts and your valuable time. If you would please come forward, and I'm going to ask that anybody who was in any of the classes this morning with them, you come up here too. My sermon theme today is we're in this together, and uh, I think it's uh, an important message that we send uh, in our support for these people and our uh, encouragement. And they all seem to like this side of the communion railing. <laughs> then, yes, I like that you're facing them. I'll come out here. Oh, look, there's movement here. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Brothers and sisters, you have volunteered your time, your energy, and your, and your gifts to the children, youth, and family ministries of this congregation. Will you offer your giftedness to this ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. And a reading from Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path. Will you carry out this ministry centered in Christ's call, striving to trust God as your guide and inspiration. If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. A reading from Ephesians. I pray that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through God's Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Will you trust in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, 
and honor the gospel with a faithful life? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help, and to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. And besides inviting you in on future Sundays with uh, any of these uh, uh, groups and Sunday school uh, classes, I now ask you, people of Zion Lutheran Church, will you today renew your commitment to our youngest brothers and sisters, our children and youth who look to you for guidance, support, and examples of righteous living? People of Zion Lutheran Church, will you claim these gifted people as those called by God to help carry out your congregation's ministry to children, youth, and families? Will you support them and enthusiastically celebrate the work they do? We will. will you pray for these leaders and the young people they serve, celebrating our children and youth in the ones Jesus blessed and welcomed? Let us pray. Gracious God, for Jesus' sake, empower these ministers to care for the young ones in our family of faith. Help them to teach faithfully, lead patiently, and guide confidently. Stir up in these servants the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who has given you the gifts and the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. On behalf of Zion Lutheran Church, we now commission you for ministry, grateful for your gifts and your willingness to serve. Thank you. Your friends, grace to you in peace from God who wonderfully made us, from Jesus the Christ who has redeemed us. Amen. I had a chance on Friday to visit uh, Wayne and Patrice uh, Houston, and things are pretty stable up there in the facility in Westerville where he is at. He has a, a very interesting mobility vehicle now with the, with the controls that look like uh, that look like uh, games that, uh, uh, and consoles these days that uh, kids play. Uh, and he can get all around the facility and he can even go outside with it to the park that is across the street as long as somebody is with him. So it's still a long haul, but uh, uh, as Patrice indicated, uh, things are pretty stable right now. So as I uh, drove home, I uh, had a chance to daydream a little bit. I was still thinking about uh, the news on uh, Thursday night that Joe Burrow had signed a contract for $275 million, which is $55 million a year, which translates to about $3 million a Sunday. And, and I was thinking... I was, I was thinking next year I plan to work about 16 Sundays, um, one, 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 Sunday, one Sunday a month and then as necessary for Patty as she takes her intensive classes and so on. So that would get me to the, about the same 16 weeks uh, a, a year um, and gosh, to be the first $3 million a Sunday preach. No, uh, back, back to reality. It's, a, it's an interesting world that we live in, is it not? The reality is that uh, we are a community. We are in it together as God's people and as the church. And as you know, the reality has been clearly stated for a number of years that the church is not a museum of the saints, but a hospital for sinners. That's not always the perception outside uh, a museum of saints uh, instead of a hospital for sinners, but it would be a good thing for the rest of the world to be aware of our own self-understanding. 
And those are not two worlds completely apart as polar opposites, because Luther, of course, told us about saints and sinners. It's a Reformation Sunday theme usually, but we are simultaneously saints and sinners. And the definition of a saint is not necessarily names on those windows or pictures in, on the windows, but the definition of a saint is a forgiven sinner. So saints and sinners do not have to be polar opposites. And the gospel reading today is one that addresses the community and speaks to those realities that, yes, there are imperfect people in the pews, and there are imperfect people in, the, in congregations, and there are imperfect pastors that serve them, and, yes, we have our struggles. This congregation has had challenges uh, through the years and, uh, and some of those struggles, and uh, this particular lesson deals with those kinds of things. It is, the, it is the peace on discipline that is found in every Lutheran congregation, whether it's ELCA or Missouri Synod or any other Lutheran grouping, about how to address those issues that arise among believers and that can arise within the church. And as a, as a somewhat veteran pastor, I've had a chance to observe most of those things and go through some of those things and have more than my share of stories. You may have to shut me off today. The first step is good. The first step is wonderful, and that's where we could hope most things would end. If a member has an issue with another member, go to that person individually and in private and have a gracious, if possible, conversation. How often do we go instead to next door or go online and we complain about service or we complain about an issue or our neighbors instead of just plain talking to them? Instead of just addressing the issue straight up. So Jesus is, is telling this emerging church at that time, the church really is born with the resurrection of Christ and the day of Pentecost. So Matthew is addressing an emerging church. And he starts with these teachings of Jesus. Jesus recognizing it. You know, think of some of the experiences he has with his own disciples. When Jesus has to tell Peter, get behind me, Satan, because you're not thinking in godly ways. You're thinking in human ways. Or when they're arguing about who's the greatest among us and who will be seated at the left hand and at the right hand of, of, uh, uh, with Jesus. And so he says, go and speak to that person honestly and individually and in private. And if it is resolved in that way, you have regained a friend. Think of a troubled marriage. Think of parent and child struggles and issues. Think of all kinds of strained relationships. And then the wonder when we are able to see that we got past those, that we, the relationship was strong enough that we could speak honestly and openly and deal with the issue and move on. Practicing God's forgiveness in the process. Step two, if step one does not accomplish it in that reading from Matthew, is about taking a couple of trusted friends as witnesses. And he says, take two or three with you, people that both of you could trust, and have that conversation and see what comes out of it. And I've had enough mentors over the years to show Christian examples of that. Of, of addressing those issues and coming out on the other side and that wonderful feeling. Oh, we've resolved that. I took mediation training in, in my Oxford years and the mediation training is very, very helpful in establishing what are the options and the possibilities after you have first detailed the grievances and moved together, together together in seeking some kind of resolution. 
the two or three in this story can be then very, very helpful in that process. Well, it isn't a guaranteed thing. Step one wasn't guaranteed to solve all problems. Wouldn't that be wonderful if it could? Step two doesn't in, in every instance work and resolve issues. Though there are so many things in this society that is so big on litigation and on suing, so much of which or many of which things could be resolved in other and better ways. But if all else fails, then Jesus says to the disciples, if that doesn't work, take it to the church. Take it to the church council. Take it to the elders and the leaders. And take it with hopes of resolution, with hopes of forgiveness and restoration of the relationship. Not fracture, not a divisive spirit, but with a hopeful outcome. And if that doesn't work in the process, then it says, treat them like tax collectors and sinners. Now, that does not suggest that you go out and shun. That's where part of the shunning tradition of some groups comes into play, whether it's the Church of the Latter-day Saints and sometimes Mennonites and Amish and so on. You hear these more, more frequently. Uh, But in any of those circumstances, it still is a desire and a hope to welcome them back into the fellowship and restore the relationship. Treat them as tax collectors and Gentiles. In our words today, as, as mission candidates to continue to reach out. But experience tells me that there's lots of people littering the sidelines that used to be in the pews. And efforts have failed. Not all of the empty seats in a church are created by, by uh, the movement from, life, uh, from this life to eternal life. There's lots of, yes, even victims along the way. I like to hear out there about people who still have ties to this congregation who you haven't seen in the pews in a long, long time, but who might still be receptive and welcoming, where there might still be healing and hope possible. But yes, the reality is it is easier to invite and win new people who have no experience with the church than it is to regain a lost brother or sister. Sad to say, there are those who have felt victimized by the church. And I'm not talking in broad terms like the the, uh, Catholic priesthood issues and so on and so forth, but I'm talking about the individual broken and fractured relationships. You know, Jesus says to the disciples then, what you unleash on earth will be unleashed in heaven, and what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And that's an interesting piece and has had a lot of theological study and survey about it as to what that really means. But I'm going to suggest that grace has been unleashed in in the heavens and poured out upon us. And we should take that very, very seriously and work to practice that. Putting the best perspective we can on a neighbor or a neighbor's actions instead of the worst. And see where that leads us. And instead of binding on earth, as a pastor in my clinical pastoral education years ago, boy, was he old-fashioned. And he practiced, he practiced excommunication in the Lutheran church. You kind of think of that as a Catholic term and usually associated with a divorce or, or things like that. Failure to have a child baptized into the Catholic faith and tradition. But no, he took his constitution to say, that person hasn't communed in a year and that person hasn't given in a year. I'm going to excommunicate them. Well, that may have worked two centuries ago, but almost anybody can blow that off and say, I am out of here and not worry in the least about that. It was kind of silly on his part. Remember what is unleashed in heaven is or unleashed on earth has been unleashed in heaven and what is to be bound on earth. Yes, there is authority there given to the disciples 
given by the church. The church places a lot of ecclesiastical authority on this particular gospel text and its processes. But then, the final word. Jesus says, for wherever two or three of you, a favorite verse of many, wherever two or three of you are gathered in my name, there I am present. There I will be present. And how important that is for our, for our decision making and our use of these processes. I may have told you already of two women in my first parish who didn't speak to each other for 11 years. They would cross the other side of the street if they encountered each other on the street so they could avoid talking to each other for maybe 11 more years. And one of them it bothered. And she came into my office and she wondered, what can I do about that? And she acknowledged, I don't even remember what the original issue was. And I said, well, you can't do anything about her response. The only thing you can do is make your effort. And she wrote her a note. And the next day there was a phone call back in the other direction. And that relationship after 11 years worth of fractures was healed, was restored, was renewed. Thanks be to God. There are other times, and I'm sure you've been through them here at Zion, and even that final step, which I've only ever had to implement one time in my career. And I did it with Bishop Dillahunt's full approval of having to remove a church member. So, Patty, my hope for you over the next 44 years of your ministry, or since you found the fountain of youth more than that, um, that you never have to, that you never have to do that. There is grace in this message, in this gospel, in Matthew creating a pathway for the emerging church of how to deal with those issues, those family issues and struggles. Any of you got a perfect family? You might have one that looks great in picture books and a perfect looking family. But every family, if you have to extend it beyond your own children, it sure doesn't go far before you find some issues. And the same is true of the family of God, where we are simultaneously saints and sinners, where God has unleashed his grace, and where forgiveness is supposed to abound. Amen. The hymn is Bind Us Together, Lord. Would you please stand?
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please kneel as you are able for the prayers. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. Hold us accountable, O God. Show your church where repentance is needed and lead us in paths of intentional compassion and listening. Help us extend hands of reconciliation and care especially in relationships with other Christians and people of other faiths. This week, we lift up Faith Lutheran Church in Wilmington and Power Source Ministries in Hamilton. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Reveal your miracles to us, O God. Move us to cherish you as we behold the wonders of creation. Renew the seas and the soil, the forests and the creatures that live in them. Turn us to ways of living that seek earth's thriving. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Inspire us to lead with honor, O God. Guide judges and legislators, police and government officials to create and uphold just laws. Move us to treat all people with dignity and guide our conversations with one another. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Help us comfort those who suffer, O God. Reassure all who are harmed by the wicked acts of others. Bring peace to all who are vulnerable, frightened, despairing, or sick, especially Patrice, Libby, Bob, Maggie, Donna, Martha, Wayne, Nate, Larry, Cash, Marty, Margaret Ann, Chloe, Minette, Wanda, Mary, Glenn, Ann, Dennis, CJ, Earl, Loretta, Patty, Mike, Jim, Noah, Janice, Butch, Lee, Clay, the Brock family, Jace, Achilles, Joyce, Fred, Joyce, Larry, Rob, Steve, Joannette, Laura, Mike, D, Casey, Nancy, and Shirley Snyder, who is homebound. Guard their waking and their sleeping, merciful God. Receive our prayer. Awaken us, O God. Challenge and encourage your people to value the vocation to which each is called. We pray for all discerning new possibilities or changing employment. In all our diverse callings, teach us to love our neighbor above all else. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for Bryce and her family as she prepares for surgery this week. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Be our hope, O God. We, we remember what thanksgiving your disciples who died in faith 
especially Bob Beers and Dave Shule. May their trust in your promise be our protection and our hope. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share God's peace. Chelsea. Peace, my peace. Peace, <laughs> peace, George. Peace, friend. <laughs> Tell me about Laura. Peace, girls. <laughs> okay. 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 Good morning. God's peace. Good morning. God's peace. Sandy, God's peace. Heidi, God's peace. Joanette, God's peace. Adam, God's peace. God's peace. I'll get you. I'll get you. God's peace. God's peace be with you. Good morning. And and your son was here last Sunday. Is he back for for good? Okay, good. Okay. All right. Okay. God's peace. You in the back row here. <laughs> and Connie's back there and appreciative of everything. That's peace, Kim.
Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, our bread of life, our table, and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them new life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. That night in which he was betrayed, Jesus our Lord took bread from the meal. He gave thanks for it broke it and gave it to his disciples and he said take this and eat this is my body broken for you do this for the remembrance of me again after the supper he took the cup and after he had given thanks he gave it for all of them to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty father with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this table. Come, eat, and live.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. And before we sing the closing hymn, I noticed there is a card out there for Patrice and Wayne this morning. Uh, you might want to add your little notes and uh, names to it. They indicated they listen in just about every Sunday, uh, and so are probably listening un unless I went too long and we've already been cut off. Um, but uh, uh, they keep in touch, and they very much miss the bells, Bill. So we hope there's a day they can return to Hamilton, and at least Patrice can uh, uh, join in again. Go, my children, with my blessing is the closing hymn. peace, God is at work in you, reaching out with God's love. I'd like to remind you there are vegetables downstairs on a cart in the lounge, tomatoes and a few other things. Please feel free to take some home with you. They're from 80 acres. <laughs>